Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Knock at the Cabin, starring Dave Bautista, Jonathan Groff, Ben Aldridge, Nikki Amuka Bird, Rupert Grint, Abby Quinn, and Kristen Kwai, forgive me if I said that wrong, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Now before I get into this, welcome back to M. Night, after his last bad film, Old, which I gave a 2.0 out of 10, and... This is his first time back since The Happening, where he made an R-rated movie again. So, let's see how successful this one is compared to The Happening, because that was a bad film, too. So, let's get into this. We open with Wen, played by Kristen Kwai, forgive me if I said that wrong, catching grasshoppers until Leonard, played by Dave Bautista, comes in to help her with one grasshopper. And they play this game where they get to know each other before... Un Better until Redmond, played by Rupert Grint, aka Ron Weasley from Harry Potter, Sabrina, played by Nikki Amuka Bird, who was also an old, and Adrian, played by Abby Quinn, whom I've never seen before, not that I remember, come in slowly and break in the cabin, and as Wen runs away from Leonard, as his heart is broken because of what he has to do, which is to make her and her father's Eric, played by Jonathan Groff from Frozen as he voiced Kristoff in Frozen, and Andrew, played by Ben Aldridge, sacrifices one of them, sacrifice one of them in order to prevent the apocalypse, while at a cabinet where Wen, Eric, and Andrew are vacationing at. And I didn't mind this opening, behind it opened where I didn't expect, which was getting the movie right away, but this whole apocalypse thing sounds really melodramatic while M. Night is shooting this like an old 70s movie. Because first of all, the Universal logo was very 70s, or maybe early 80s. And second, this all of all, the cinematography felt very 70s. And I didn't mind it, as I do like it, while the characterization in this movie is kind of bad. Like the four intruders felt, again, very melodramatic, as I couldn't believe them for the most for most of the movie, as I thought they were bullshitting about the apocalypse, but we'll get there. And the family just felt unworthy characters. Sabrina gives Eric a concussion, while Andrew beats the shit out of Redmond, and Leonard says that's enough, while we get a flashback of Andrew's mom and dad visiting them as a couple, and stay for only 45 minutes And they, as they drove hours to get there. And they don't approve of their romance, but I do, come on. But I still do like don't like them as they felt very unworthy. While they talk about the apocalypse, they have a kids show on the TV as Sabrina says she's a nurse. Leonard is a second grade teacher, or some kind of PE teacher, I would say. Redmond works at a gas company, and Adrian says she's a cook as she loves to feed people. And they stop by showing the apocalypse on the TV. I'm still calling bullshit at this point in this movie. Like, these characters do. This plot is very melodramatic. While M. Night does what he did in Old, where he focuses not on the head of the person talking. And it got annoying after a while, too. And Like, kind of like what he did with that film Old, where he just wasn't focusing on their faces all the way. That was stupid. Redmond is killed because they refuse to choose who saves the world by sacrificing someone, as they do at this point, and that is Redmond, who is very unlikable in this, mo in this point in the movie. We get another flashback of how Eric and Andrew adopt one as their daughter, as a baby, and these flashbacks were kind of annoying from the plot of the movie, as they should probably have opened with these scenes to begin with. While we get back to see M. Night in a cameo where he's promoting some chicken, which was hilarious to me, and this is before they ever, before they watch the news and the tsunami, and I'm still calling bullshit at this point, and this movie is a soft R rating, as the violence is barely shown, and they do cruise, but it did, but it felt mild as far as I as saying the word fuck goes, but otherwise, this is a very soft R rating. And M. Night's second R-rated movie since The Happening. And other than the violence, that's barely shown and some cursing. And how the fuck is that an R-rated movie to begin with? We get another flashback of Eric, Andrew, and Wen getting to the cabin and looking at the lake. And I did like the scene for as we get to know the characters a, l a little bit. 
but it was a little too late in the movie, in my opinion, as this should have been in the opening scene. That's M. Night's biggest mistake in this whole movie, in my opinion. Sabrina bandages Eric's head because of the concussion he tells him to trust them, where he can't. And how can I trust them? Because who knows if they're bullshitting around or... Because... M9 is known for twists, while Wen escapes through the basement, and Leonard tries to find her until he catches her behind the tree, and which didn't scare me because I saw that scene in the trailer, and in this movie is not really that scary in my opinion, as there's no suspense in this movie whatsoever, and that's what M9's good at. Adrian makes Wen some breakfast on the next day, as Wen gives the knife to Eric for him to cut free, as Adrian is next to be killed, as she confesses she has a son named Charlie, and she had to hear him dying, and they still refuse to believe them. And Adrian dies anyway for their denial, which is fucked up for damn sure, but I don't like her either. Andrew calls out on their bullshit, and suddenly Wen screams out, and Eric cuts free and goes off against Leonard, while Andrew goes to the truck to grab the gun, and he brought up earlier in the film, and he said he brought it, and I thought that was he was lying about that, like bullshitting that kind of thing. Well, that while Sabrina goes after him, and he shoots her because, but he doesn't kill her, and she runs off afraid because he has the gun, and gets back to the cabin and points the gun at Leonard, and suddenly Sabrina runs, and Andrew shoots her, dead. While we get another flashback of Andrew and Eric rudely interrupted by a drunk Redman hitting Andrew in the head with the bottle, and he trains to be tough and buys a gun, and that felt very unnecessary. And Sabrina's death I could care very little about. Andrew thought he recognized Redman as his last name was Albanon, and I caught his first name was Rory on my second viewing. I did go twice for this thing. As they do say it in much later in the film, while Andrew puts Leonard in the bathroom and locks him in, and they're led to believe he got out of the window when he was hiding in the shower, as Andrew shoots him in the arm through the shower curtain, and Leonard pops out and wrestles the gun from Andrew, and Eric tried to help Leonard, pushing him off and points the gun at them, and Eric turns on the TV and sees more and more apocalyptic shit happening all over the world. And Leonard knows what the anchor was going to say on the TV as he says it before she said it. And Andrew's still in denial. And as he smashes the TV, Eric and, and Eric slowly believes Leonard. And Leonard takes Eric, Andrew, and Wen outside. And they put one in a treehouse while Leonard slashes his own throat off screen. Well, kind of off screen. I don't know how to explain it. Well, the camera is pointed towards Leonard's chest when that happens, which annoyed the hell out of me. And the apocalypse is starting. And I can't believe that's actually happening at this point, as M. Night is more about the twist than not as it was in so in your face, which shocked the shit out of me, as Andrew has no choice but to shoot Eric off screen because he starts to believe them and Andrew goes upstairs to the treehouse and comforts Wen as the apocalypse happens and Andrew and Wen get out of the cabin and walk towards a truck in which I believed Leonard was Leonard's truck and Andrew and Wen get out of there and go to a diner and see on the TV the apocalypse actually happening and they once again get in the car and drive away and this climax is so in your face and I didn't mind that at all as it's a different movie from m night and i kind of admire that but in the middle of the day let's get to the rating and you'll see what i'm gonna rate it i'll give this movie a 5.0 out of 10 the reason is it's in the middle of the road is because i could like it and i could hate it at the same time like m night does the shot where while someone talks move and moves towards another direction which I got briefly annoyed with like it was an old. And I don't like these characters as the four intruders were very melodramatic like this plot is. And the three victims were are very unworthy characters. The movie isn't scary, but there's scenes I liked versus the scenes I didn't like. As there's no suspense in this movie whatsoever. And the flashback should have been in the opening scene of the movie. But it would have been a... 
very unlikable opening scene, the movie did pull off the apocalypse, which is not so much of a twist. And M. Night is known for twists, and it felt like in your face. And I like it, and I hate it. Like this entire movie. And this is as this is the faintest of mild recommendations I can give it, as it's in the middle of the road for me. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. And next year, M. Night might come out with another movie in April, from what I'm understanding. Until we get there, what do you twist?